Hello out there. Got a bit of a strange one for you today. This is a horizontal shingle mill. Don't see too many of these around for whatever reason. Uh, this one was made by the G. Walter Green Company of Peterborough, Ontario, which isn't too far away from where I purchased it. It uh, The blade spins as if it's on a tabletop and your block goes in the little carriage on the one end and it has a very clever design to uh, taper the block. There's a little lever connected to a pair of wedges and they lift each side of the block. And then the other cool thing with this is the big lever on the side that can drop the entire kind of support platform so that you can take a thick slab off the first cut instead of having to waste your time doing a few passes to get very narrow shingles. So that's still haven't been able to get it work, working right, but uh, the rest is all freed up. Uh, here you can see him doing the first sharpening. This thing is, who knows when this thing last ran. It's a little bit ripe. Um, it's not terribly seized, although everything's pitted. Surprisingly, even the jam nuts and the uh, adjusting wheels aren't, aren't seized. So you'll see kind of through the video that I'm adjusting it as it's running. Uh, there's the one wheel by the drop lever that kind of controls the thickness. And then you set the limits for the taper on both ends of the stroke of the little hand lever. Now here's the bottom. Uh, there's oil pipes that run all the way down, but they're plugged. So I can just oil right into these big cups under it. The top bearing is just a radial bearing and the bottom one has a massive oil pot all around it because it takes the thrust, uh, the weight of the shaft, of course. So it doesn't seem that terrible under there. The, the big pulley uh, flywheel kind of shrouded it from being too weathered. Um, of course, got to keep an eye, make sure it doesn't heat up when it's running. And here's the carriage. The blocks that we use standard on the automatic and swing shingle mills that we already have are 16 inches, but for whatever reason, this mill is set up for 17 inch blocks. So in the future, I'll just uh, adjust that. The bolts were pretty darn rusty, so I let them sit in oil and just go ahead and cut up a couple 17 inch blocks for uh, experimenting here today. So the Walter Green Company is kind of interesting because there's not much information on them. And from what I can tell, they were in operation from the early, early 1900s. Uh, they took over one of the white foundry buildings in Peterborough. And uh, they went all the way into the 50s when they were, um, I don't know if they dissolved. I really don't know. It's hard to say because there's not much information available. But the facilities were still around in the 50s and 60s, no longer occupied by Green Company. There are some advertisements out there that say Green made saw, shingle, and lath equipment. And um, it's kind of interesting, too, that Museum of Science and Technology in Ottawa has one of these exact mills. And it's a reference as well that this one's missing a part. Oh, yeah, ouch, that hurt. I wanged my knee on the part of the three point linkage. Anyway, um, the mill is missing the chute that directs the sawdust. It should kind of loop it around, fire it out where the belt is, but that's gone. And there's a note that on the Cyan Tech Museum's mill that it's missing the chute, but the sawdust chute is there, so I, I think they're implying that the little shingle catching chute is gone. But as far as I know, those were just custom made out of planks and bolts and stuff based on the application of the machine. So here's the belt up. It took me a few times to get the belt oriented right. I put a couple unnecessary twists in it, but uh, it ended up working out all right. Also, the pulley on this is 14 inch, where the swing shingle mill has a 10 inch pulley. So it spins significantly slower with the case tractor than the swing mill does, so I might have to take the John Deere out and uh, run it with this to get a higher um, belt speed going, but for today's experimenting, that'll do just fine. I will, um, yeah, I'll grab a block and try it out, and hope you enjoy.
Now here you can see I'm being a bit optimistic and I'm lowering it to take a thick pass. But from a little bit of further investigation, we realize that the blade is not square. The plane of the blade is not square with the plane of the, um, the carriage. So it ends up kind of pinching the blade. That's no good. So I forget that idea and just raise it up and take thin passes. And because the shingles are thin, they deflect easily. And uh, that difference in angle doesn't really affect it as bad. It's taking much longer than it should to cut a normal shingle, of course. That's just because I'm being a bit gentle and also because the blade is uh, rough. Everything's, everything's pretty rough still. So here, we're sanding the blade down. The boss came over to clean it off a little bit, try to reduce the friction on it. And um, I was adjusting the, uh, the blade depth there for the carriage block. Depth, I should say. So um, it's set pretty well here. I sharpened it once more, went around the whole thing, and um, I'll just let you enjoy the saw.
last story of business is to separate the junker shingles and the good ones that still need to be edged. So I uh, hope to see you next time. Until then, have a good one.